So, welcome back. There have been some advancements and there have been some setbacks with the printer in the last week. I didn't get to record all of that on video. Um, but here's a short recapture. First of all, I was able to print a small enclosure for the display controller, which looks really nice and which worked out okay. So I can now just leave that wherever I need it and where it's not in the way. Uh, that is really nice. I was able to get prints to stick down by printing them with a rather large skirt, but that also works very well. And I did get prints that look very well and that work not at all. Because as I was printing larger things, I suddenly noticed that I did have some z-axis distortion. So you can actually see that was not intended to look that way. And the reason for that is so extremely stupid that I'm almost afraid to tell. Because it's entirely my mistake. At some point in time, I decided to start using the EEPROM. Uh, because I wanted to change settings and I wanted to have those settings stay within the controller. The bad thing is you can't change all the settings that you can get to. There are settings in the EEPROM that you can't change from the controller. So what happened was when I manually changed some things in the software the changes weren't uh, affecting the printer because the old values are still in the EEPROM. And that is was what happened with the Z-axis calibration. So my Z-axis values have been wrong all the time. Everything I did so far um, is actually higher than it should be. Um, it's not that much of an issue but um, I was pretty mad at myself for not noticing that and for first of all making that mistake in the first place. The other thing that I did is I made this little fan shroud uh, for the for the fan that I have here that now has slightly better cooling not a lot better but slightly better cooling to the prints so they do look a bit nicer. Um, yeah that is mostly it. Uh, what I do need to do now is I need to manually uh, erase all the settings in the EEPROM and load the configuration that is in the compiled software because that is not done automatically and every time you compile a new software for the Arduino and the ramps and everything um, the settings that are in the EEPROM of the Arduino are not overwritten. Um, it took me a while to learn that and uh, yeah that was kind of painful. Now I'm going to get this all hooked up. I have a new software on the Arduino. I have some changes that I wanted to do anyway. I was going to make a version of my uh, cheap ass extruder that has a a level, a level sensor so I can get closer to the print bed in the middle because I do have a little bit of shift in the print bed when it moves all the way to the front and all the way to the back and I also want to get rid of that. Um, those are the things that I'm really working on right now. So I want to have uh, print bed leveling, I want to have um, z-axis work and um, I want to get to the point where I have uh, results that are the way that they should be and not slightly distorted. Um, that's what I'm going for this weekend, so let's see how far we get. So in order to copy the configuration that we compiled into the software onto the EEPROM of the Arduino, we need to do two things. First of all, we need to connect to the 3D printer. And once we're connected, we need to manually 
issue two commands. These two commands are not that special in any way, um, but there is no other way of accessing that function um, in Repetir or Marlin, and uh, that's kind of an issue. So what we need to do is we need to manually copy the configuration that was compiled into the Arduino into the RAM of the Arduino. We do this by issuing the command M502. M502. And then we send that command. Now, everything that was compiled into the software is now in the memory of the software and nothing that had been there before um, is still there. So if we changed settings that were beforehand copied into EEPROM, they're now back to the way they are in the configuration that we compiled into the software. And after that, we need to save it to the EEPROM. And we do that by issuing M500. Now, we do get the, configura the confirmation right down here in the window. Let's see if we can zoom this in. And you can actually see that at 502 the configuration was reset to the defaults in the software and at 500 it was stored to EEPROM. Now this means that all the issues that I've been having should be gone now. At least I hope so. And I will be testing that out. So I did reset all of the settings and I'm going to um, try another print. Let's see how it goes this time. I hope it works better. I'm going to um, raise the temperature of the filament just a little bit. So you can actually see how big the skirt is compared to the part, but it works quite well. I haven't used skirts in quite some time, but if it's a way to get this stuff to stick down, then fine with me. Um, the thing that I'm more worried right now is that the table appears to be moving about 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 millimeters up and down while it's going from uh, one extreme uh, Y coordinate to another and uh, this might be due to the fact that the the plates that are holding the construction in place are only placed in the middle and uh, they're basically forcing that part of acrylic into the groove of the of the profile and maybe I need to get bigger washers to put under that or even make something that will give it more pressure um, over the complete surface I'll need to figure that one out. But it's not really bad right now. And if I do get bed leveling, then that should be taken care of. Now what I do need, and what I've been trying to print, uh, these few prints now, um, is a new holder for the extruder. Um, because the, the extruder needs to move in the upward direction so I can get the y-axis 
um, the x-axis slide to go down just a little bit and once that's done I'm pretty sure that the prints will improve quite drastically yeah and that's what it's doing now so now that the settings are correct um, the result appears to be quite a bit smaller than the other one was now how about that so um, this was actually 12% larger than it should have been or higher and we can see that the stepper that's supposed to go in there now fits perfectly wow good now that is good um, we can also see that this sticks down really well oh wow this sticks down extremely well And also there's no warping and no coming loose whatsoever. All in all, I would say this is a very nice result. Um, there's a, a bit of vibration in there, it's hard to see. Oh, where's that light coming from here? Now you can see it. There's a bit of vibration. Some patterns in here. But um, nothing that I'm worried about right now. I was going reasonably fast. So by going slower, um, I can take care of that. Also, the, la the layers look good. Um, still no Z-axis issues. Uh, you can see the pattern that you can see in here is from the infill, which is, I think it was 25%, something like that. Well, one good result. Let's see if we can keep it up. So uh, now I'm going to make um, a second part to put on the top of here to hold the, the level probe. And let's do that now. So here you have it. This is the new extruder mount, extruder level sensor, fan, whatever. I'm not 100% happy with it because it is rather heavy. It adds to the vibration. It could be mounted closer to the rail all these little things but it's working quite good the level sensor is working um, the fan is working uh, the fan shroud is doing what I wanted to do it's all quite good but it's not optimal but for a start this will do and it, it'll It'll probably do for quite a while until I can get to designing the the new mount uh, for the E3D extruder pair and stepper. And when I'm done with that, I think that should be it. What I'm going to do and what I'm going to plan is I want to have um, the fan and, and everything that, that cools the print on the back of the rail um, that way I can distribute the weight a little bit better yeah but so far uh, it's quite nice and it, and it works good too I'm pretty happy with all of it the thing that I'm not really happy with is uh, this build platform um, is actually bending just this tiny bit but if I make a height map of, of all the surface there's actually a larger bend over there and a slight bend over here and this here is where the the rail is and it's like 0 
three millimeters of bend in this really hard piece of aluminium. I didn't think that would happen. I'm really surprised about that. Um, yeah, but that is one of the reasons why I'm doing this, uh, to find out what the constraints of such a build are. And, well, seemingly I found some. Uh, this level sensor um, was rated at 8 millimeters for iron and it triggers at about 1.1 millimeters um, on aluminium. Uh, well, even with iron and I tried it out, it is like 3 millimeters or so, so um, this is really not optimal, but it works. And I'm going to do some test prints now. I'm going to see if things keep sticking down. And if they do, I'm going to use it to print a bit. And then improve on that. So, I think that's it for this weekend. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.